Members of the British Royal Family attend the 2023 Commonwealth Day service in London. Prince Albert II of Monaco spends a day in southeast France. Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark hold a meeting with climate ambassadors in Copenhagen. Members of the Norwegian Royal Family attend a historic ski race in Oslo. And Princess Iman bint Abdullah II of Jordan marries Mr. Jamel Alexander Thermiotis in Amman. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name is Alexandra, and this is your Royal Daily News for March 13th, 2023. On Sunday in Amman, her Royal Highness Princess Imam bint Abdullah II of Jordan married Mr. Jamel Alexander Thermiotis in a beautiful ceremony held inside the atrium at the Bet al Urdun Palace at sunset. 150 guests attended the intimate royal wedding ceremony, including Her Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II of Jordan, and his fiancee, Miss Rajwa bint Khalid bin Musad bin Saif bin Abdul Aziz Al Saif. Her Royal Highness Princess Salma bint Abdullah II of Jordan, His Royal Highness Prince Hashim bin Abdullah II of Jordan, Her Royal Highness Princess Muna Al Hussein of Jordan, the bride's grandmother and the mother of His Majesty the King, Her Royal Highness Princess Zen bint Al Hussein of Jordan, Her Royal Highness Princess Aisha bint Al Hussein of Jordan, Their Royal Highnesses Prince Hashim bin Al Hussein and Princess Fada Al Hashim of Jordan. Their Royal Highnesses Prince Hassan bin Talal and Princess Sarvath al Hassan of Jordan. His Royal Highness Prince Rashid bin al Hassan and Princess Zina al Rashid of Jordan. Their Royal Highnesses Prince Ali bin al Hussein and Princess Rim al Ali of Jordan. Her Royal Highness Princess Jalia bin al Ali of Jordan. Her Royal Highness Princess Bashma bin Talal of Jordan. Their Royal Highnesses Prince Talal bin Muhammad and Princess Giyade al Talal of Jordan. Their Royal Highnesses Prince Ghazi bin Muhammad and Princess Miriam al Ghazi of Jordan. Her Royal Highness Princess Sumaya bin Hassan of Jordan. His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Al Hussein of Jordan. His Majesty the King's younger brother. Her Royal Highness Princess Zina of Jordan. His Royal Highness Prince Omar bin Faisal of Jordan. Her Royal Highness Princess Aya bin Faisal of Jordan. The groom's family, Mrs. Corina Hernandez Perez and Mr. George Alexander Thermiotis. Mr. Alejandro Thermiotis, Miss Alexia Thermiotis, along with other members of the Jordanian royal family, as well as members from the royal families of Bahrain and Qatar, and close friends. Late last evening, Miss Mathilde Favier, head of public relations for the House of Dior, confirmed that the stunning custom wedding gown with matching lace veil is Dior Haute Couture. It was also confirmed that the stunning delicate tiara was created by the House of Chaumet. The flower girls were the daughters of Her Royal Highness Prince Aya bint Faisal of Jordan. Prior to the wedding, Her Majesty the Queen took to social media to share a heartfelt message to her daughter, stating, quote, It feels like only yesterday that our little Princess Imam first lit up our world. Your father held you in his heart before holding you in his arms. You have his smile, the laughter in his eyes, and his compassionate heart. You will always be his little girl. And what a loving sister— Al Hussein's best friend, Hashim's confidant, and Salma's soulmate. I will always remember how every time I gave you a piece of candy, you would immediately hold out your hand and insist, one for Hussein. I thank God every day for you, for a daughter who is kind, gracious, and blessed with the love of all who know her. I am so proud of you, all of your humility, tenderness, and pure soul. Today, as the mother of the bride, I find myself overwhelmed with joy and pride. Through my tears, I see your two grandfathers. May their souls rest in peace. I can almost picture them both, dancing, joking, and laughing like they did that night your father and I were married. Today, my beloved Abu al Hussein, your father, kissed you on your forehead. He took you by the hand just as he did the day you took your first steps and saw how far his little girl has come. Always remember the love for Jordan that you carry in your heart. Never forget that you are a Hashemite Jordanian, the granddaughter of Al Hussein, and the daughter of Abdullah. Iman, at this beautiful and bittersweet moment, I pray that God will bless you and protect you and grant you the lifetime of happiness you so deserve. Congratulations, Habiti. End quote. 
Congratulations to the couple. I wish you both much love, light, happiness, good health, joy, and laughter. The next royal wedding to take place in Jordan is rumored to be in June between His Royal Highness Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II of Jordan and Miss Rajwa Al Saif. This morning in Amman, the Crown Prince participated in a meeting at the headquarters of the Ministry for Social Development. During the meeting, the Crown Prince was briefed on the, quote, strategy for child care centers, which the Ministry of Social Development has recently completed, end quote. The Crown Prince noted the importance of moving forward in implementing the strategy to make a tangible impact over the coming months, stressing the need to provide the utmost care to this segment of society. In Manah, His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq Al Said of Amman, accompanied by His Highness Crown Prince Said Dayazim bin Haytham Al Said of Amman, and His Highness Said Bilarab bin Haytham Al Said of Amman, presided over the inauguration of the Amman Across the Ages Museum. Upon his arrival, His Majesty the Sultan and their Highnesses were warmly welcomed by the Secretary General of Royal Court Affairs, the Chairman of the Museum's Board of Trustees, the Chairman of the Main Committee of the Museum Project, members of the main committee, and the director general of the museum. After a few hi's, hello's, hey, how are yous, His Majesty the Sultan unveiled a commemorative plaque which marked the official opening of the museum. Thereafter, His Majesty and their Highnesses were given a tour of the museum and various exhibitions. On Sunday, his Majesty the Sultan, as the Supreme Commander of the Royal Amman Armed Forces, and His Highness Crown Prince Theazin bin Haytham al Said of Amman, visited the Adam Air Base, home of the Royal Air Force of Amman. During their visit, His Majesty the Sultan and the Crown Prince attended a RAFO briefing by Air Vice Marshal Kamaz Hamad al Ghafri, RAFO Commander and Commander of the Adam Air Base. In Sir Varanger, His Majesty King Hal V of Norway visited the garrison of the Sir Varanger, GSV, which guards, protects, monitors, and patrols Norway's 198-kilometer border with Russia. According to the Norwegian Royal Court, the border with Russia is also a, quote, Schengen border, which imposes special requirements for presence and surveillance. The border guard operates both on foot and by boat in the summer, and on skis and snowmobiles in the winter, and trains around 600 soldiers each year." End quote. During today's visit, His Majesty the King, accompanied by the Chief of Defense, was given a briefing by top military commanders about the activities of the members of the Norwegian Armed Forces carry out, toward several camps, and spent time with the brave men and women of the Armed Forces. On Sunday, in Holmenkollen, Their Majesties King Harald V and Queen Sonia of Norway, accompanied by their Royal Highnesses Crown Prince Håkon and Crown Princess Metamarit of Norway, Her Royal Highness Princess Ingrid Alexandra of Norway, and Princess Astrid, Mrs. Ferner, attended the women's five-mile race during the famous Holmenkollen Ski Festival at the Holmenkollen Ski Stadium. According to the Norwegian Royal Court, 32 women participated in this first-ever five-mile race for women in the World Cup. The winner of the historic race was Miss Ragenhild Haga. Miss Astrid Slind came in second, while Miss Jessica Diggins from the United States came in third. On Friday, Her Majesty Queen Sonia of Norway officially opened the 10th edition of the Norwegian Nature Photo Festival held at the Town Hall Theatre in Xi. Established in 2013, the NNPF is the largest Nordic nature photography festival with over 550 participants. During the festival weekend, visitors can experience photo shows and attend lectures, in addition to various indoor and outdoor exhibitions at selected locations in Xi. After the opening, her Majesty the Queen viewed various exhibitions, including exhibitions by Biophoto, the Norwegian Society for Photography, and she also met with nature photographer and professor of biology, Mr. Adun Rickardson. In Copenhagen, 
their royal highnesses, Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, held a meeting with the Ambassador for Climate Change of Denmark, Mr. Tomas Christensen, and the Danish Ministry of Climate's Chief Negotiator, Ms. Maria Samuelsen, at Amalienborg. During this morning's meeting, the ambassadors provided an update on the global climate agenda and the Copenhagen Climate Ministerial, which will be held on March 20th through 21st, 2023. Fifty ministers and international leaders will meet in Copenhagen to, quote, take the first steps towards the UN Climate Summit COP28 in December, end quote, according to a press release. On Sunday, in Herning, Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte of Denmark, as patron, attended the 2023 Danish Warm Blood Stallion Show held at the MCH Messe Center. During the closing of the show, the princess presented several awards, including Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte's Walking Prize. Last Friday in Copenhagen, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Mary of Denmark held a meeting with the United States Ambassador to Denmark, His Excellency Alan Leventhal, at the Ambassador's residence. Also attending Friday's meeting was a former president of MIT, Dr. Raphael Reif, the manager of Crown Princess Mary Center at the University of Copenhagen, Mr. Simon Hansen, as well as other representatives from various international and national universities and organizations. During the meeting, discussions focused on, quote, creating a good framework for innovative research and collaboration across institutions as well as coming up with common solutions to societal problems, which is also a central objective of the Crown Princess Mary Center." End quote. On Sunday in Stockholm, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden celebrated her name day held in the inner courtyard at the Kunlinga Satet. During the celebrations, the Crown Princess, accompanied by His Royal Highness Prince Daniel of Sweden, Her Royal Highness Princess Estelle of Sweden, His Royal Highness Prince Oscar of Sweden, members of the Swedish Armed Forces, High Guards from the Life Regiment's Hussars, K3, and the Army Music Corps performed various songs and presented the Crown Princess with flowers. On Friday, their Majesties King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia of Sweden, accompanied by Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden, and their Royal Highnesses Prince Carl Philip and Princess Sophia of Sweden, hosted a luncheon for former ministers of the government at the Kunlinga Satet. In Riga, Latvia, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg, accompanied by the Minister of the Economy, Mr. Franz Foyet, arrived in the beautiful Baltic country on Sunday, ahead of their two-day state visit. According to a press release, the President of the Republic of Latvia, Egils Levitz, invited the Grand Duke, Minister Foyet and a Luxembourg economic delegation on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Latvia and Luxembourg. Quote, the intensification of bilateral relations between the two countries dates back 30 years, with the de jure recognition of Latvia by Luxembourg and the re-establishment of diplomatic relations after the restoration of Latvian independence in 1991. End quote. Yesterday morning, the Grand Duke and Minister Foyet visited the Latvian Art Museum, which houses some of the most, quote, important artistic collections in the country, with nearly 52,000 pieces from 1850 to the present day, end quote. This morning, the Grand Duke, Minister Foyet, and the Luxembourg delegation arrived at the Riga Castle, where they were warmly welcomed by the President of the Republic of Latvia. Built in 1330 by the Order of Livonians, Riga Castle is the official residence of the President. The old outer castle, erected in the 16th century, has housed the President's offices since 1995. After the national anthems were played and the inspection of the Guards of Honor took place, the President ushered the Grand Duke and his delegation into the castle to exchange gifts and hold a private meeting. Soon, the Grand Duke, Minister Foyette, and the President arrived at the Liberty Monument, to place a wreath in honor of the hundreds of soldiers who died in combat during the Latvian War of Independence from 1918 to 1920. Thereafter, the Grand Duke and the President arrived at Latvian Parliament to attend a luncheon meeting with the Speaker of Parliament. 
In the early afternoon, the Grand Duke and the President also visited the Occupation Museum of Latvia, where they were given a guided tour. The museum is dedicated to the history of the occupation of Latvia between 1940 and 1991 and has, quote, set itself the goal of paying tribute to the Latvians killed, deported, or forced to find refuge outside of their homeland during this period, end quote. Later in the afternoon, the duo, along with Minister Foyette and the Latvian minister, Mr. John Asselborn, visited the National Library of Latvia. During their visit, the Grand Duke participated in a book handover ceremony that took place within the framework of the People's Library Project. Initiated by the National Library of Latvia with the aim of enriching its stock with personalized book donations. During the ceremony, the Grand Duke presented a book on the history of Luxembourg to the director of the library. After a quick snack break, the Grand Duke and the President visited the Latvian National Art Museum, took a stroll through the historic Old Town, and toured the Art Nouveau district of Riga. Here's a fun fact for you. The style of architecture, Art Nouveau, is accounted for by a third of all buildings in the city center, making the city of Riga the highest concentration of Art Nouveau architecture in the world. The day ended with a gala dinner at Riga Castle, hosted by the president in honor of Grand Duke Henri's state visit. On Friday, in Borscheid, His Royal Highness Hereditary Grand Duke Guillaume of Luxembourg visited Chateau de Borscheid to attend the 50th anniversary celebrations of the non-profit association Les Amis du Chateau de Borscheid. The goal of the association is a preservation, improvement, restoration, and tourist use of the chateau ruins of Borscheid and the protection of the surrounding areas. During his visit, the hereditary Grand Duke met with the President and the volunteers of the association to thank them for all their hard work in preserving the historic chateau. In Den Haag, His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands presented the Medal of Honor for Art and Science of the House Order of Aranya to well-known Dutch photographer Mr. Erwin Olaf at the Palais Nordande. This morning, in Nice, France, His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco attended the presentation of the final two stages of the Tour de France, held at the Opera de Nice. On Friday, the Sovereign Prince spent the day in Ole Oula, in southeast France, on the occasion to officially recognize the town as a Grimaldi historic site of Monaco. Upon his arrival, the Sovereign Prince was warmly welcomed by various government officials, including the mayor. We'll just call him Robert, because I can't pronounce his last name. Anyways, thereafter, the Sovereign Prince and Mayor Robert unveiled a plaque that now officially confirms that the cute little town belongs to the network of Grimaldi Historic Sites of Monaco. Once the photo op for the press was over, the Sovereign Prince and his delegation, along with Mayor Robert, walked to the Église Saint-Laurent, to attend a special Mass in memory of Charles Grimaldi, the Bishop of Rhodes. In 1770, Charles Grimaldi was buried behind the church, and recently his funeral plaque was recently restored. After Mass, the Sovereign Prince, his delegation, and Mayor Robert visited Le Chateau Primary School, where he met with teachers, staff, and a bunch of happy screaming kids. The chateau used to be the home of a Grimaldi who served as a squadron commander in the Navy and who was a brother of the Bishop of Rhodes. An hour or so later, the Sovereign Prince participated in a meeting at the town hall with local officials and Mayor Robert. After the meeting, the Sovereign Prince and Mayor Robert stepped outside to attend a ceremony whereupon the Sovereign Prince became an honorary citizen of Oliol or however you pronounce it. I, I can't pronounce this French name. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not offending anybody, but it's really difficult. <laughs> anyway, to thank the mayor for his honorary citizenship, Prince Albert II gave a bronze Melitza statue, which represents Francoise Grimaldi, who in 1297 freed Monaco from the Genoese domination and established the Grimaldi dynasty. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> In 
In Bangkok, Her Royal Highness Princess Avera Vanavari of Thailand gave a rare interview with the newspaper South China Morning Post. In the interview, the princess discusses her passion for fashion, her own fashion line, and her internships at Dior, Armani, Ferragamo, Balmain, and Bulgari. Quote, Working for these brands helped me to gain confidence and gave me a very sharp eye and the opportunity to work at the level in the real industry. I wasn't just a princess. I actually worked. Work means actually working. I was very hands-on, and I wasn't the first assistant, but the fourth or fifth. So I learned fast, and I had to be tough. End quote. If you're interested in reading the interview with the princess, in the description box below is a direct link to the South China Morning Post. And it is in English. And finally, in London, Their Majesties King Charles III and the Queen Consort of the United Kingdom, accompanied by Their Royal Highnesses the Prince and Princess of Wales, Their Royal Highnesses the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, and Her Royal Highness the Princess Royal and Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence, attended the annual Commonwealth Day service held at Westminster Abbey. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Tuesday, March 14th with all the latest royal news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful evening and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, take care everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.